This is going to be a quick video where I go over some high vacuum and ultra high vacuum basics. When I first got this chamber uh, just a few months ago, I couldn't even tell you what the different flanges and fittings were called. I knew nothing about the valves and the different pumps required. So I'm going to share with you um, what I've learned. And again, this is going to be a, a basics video. It's not going to be extremely in depth. First thing, when you're working on this kind of stuff, you should always wear gloves. Even like nitrile gloves are good, um, but you want to prevent putting your fingerprints on any surface that's going to be exposed to vacuum, especially on the inside of the chamber. So even when you're just handling uh, flanges and such, you should always be wearing uh, nitrile gloves, and that just prevents uh, a lot of unnecessary cleaning afterwards. If you want to get in the one times n to the minus six to minus seven and beyond tour range, you're gonna to have to do a pretty thorough wipe down of your chamber. The best thing to do, um, you can do an initial wipe down with acetone, and that will, oops, that will uh, get rid of fingerprints and uh, organics and stuff like that. And then after that, you'll want to do an isopropyl alcohol wipe down to get rid of the acetone residue. You should stay away from drugstore brand uh, IPA. Um, you should actually get like real uh, lab brand, uh, strong 90 to 99 percent. Uh, isopropyl if possible and once you do those wipe downs um, you don't want to put any more fingerprints or contamination onto uh, any of the, the vacuum surfaces let's talk about flanges real quick the first type of flange I'm going to talk about is the conflat uh, conflat otherwise known as CF this is a two and three quarter inch CF viewport it's got glass in it so you would put this um, if you have a conflat port on a chamber that uh, you don't have a use for, you're not gonna put any, any instrumentation there or a feed through. So you put this on it just so you can see through it uh, in, into the chamber. And again, you should be handling this stuff with nitrile gloves on, but um, all of this stuff is quite dirty, so I'm gonna be cleaning it before I use it anyway. You'll notice the conflat on the inside here has a knife edge, and this is a genderless flange. So if this were the chamber end, it would bolt on like that, and you would sandwich a copper gasket in between them. It's an oxygen-free copper gasket. And these get pretty pricey as these conflats get larger. And that would get pressed in by this knife edge in there and it would create a very, very good high vacuum seal. These are among the best seals. If you have a vacuum chamber that only contains these CF, these conflat um, metal to metal to metal seals, then you can get very, very high vacuums and you can go into the ultra high vacuum range. If you have O-ring seals, which I'll talk about in a second, then you're going to be limited um, to lower vacuum, or rather to worse vacuums than you could get with just a metal to metal seal. So these conflats are really awesome seals. This is a two and three quarters. That's a pretty standard size. Um, I have a few of those on my chamber here. These are all two and three quarters. Um, I have a gauge uh, on this one. And then on the other side, uh, I made this plate here is a two and three quarter to eighth inch NPT. Uh, NPT is not the best for high vacuum, but I mean, it, it's all right. As long as you use Teflon tape and have a thermocouple gauge on there. But that, that conflat size is quite common to see. And this is a four and a half inch conflat, um, like liquid feed through four port. It's a pretty nice piece right there. And, uh, yeah, two port, like water cooling, um, CF feed through. This is a conflat, this is a really big conflat. What is this, like eight inch? Yep, you got that knife edge in it. And this is a massive conflat. I, I don't really know the size of this, but you still see it's still got that knife edge in it. My uh, turbo pump here, it's a very navigator turbo pump. Um, I have it mounted up on an elbow here. It's a custom uh, Lesker part. This is a six inch conflat on this end, and then it goes to something called an ISO seal, which I'll talk about now. So then there's ISO seals, which um, are not quite as good as the conflat because they use a gasket. So here, this is an ISO um, K. There's ISO F, which is the same thing, but instead of using clamps, it uses through hole bolts. So the ISO has a flange that has a groove in it, and there'll be a centering ring assembly. It'll normally look like this, where you have an O-ring, and then you have um, an inner and an outer. Sometimes the inner is stainless and the outer is aluminum um, band. And this is called the centering ring assembly. And that centering ring will just fit into that groove, and 
it's clamped on. So that's not quite a good a seal as the uh, conflat that we just uh, just talked about. So uh, what's ISO on here? This is an ISO 800. Oh, sorry, ISO 200, uh, 200 millimeter, which is an eight inch flange. And you'll see it's ISO K, um, not ISO F. So it's bolted on here. And this is a massive, I'm pretty sure this is an ISO 630. Um, this whole thing, and it's got the centering where you can see the aluminum band in the middle there. And then same with the bottom of the chamber too, it's ISO 630. So that's an absolutely massive uh, hunk of stainless, it, it, really, really heavy. My pump is uh, ISO 100, right there. It's about four inches uh, across. So I have these clamps on it. And again, it's got that centering ring assembly in the middle. So ISO is, is used pretty extensively. But on a chamber like this, I can't expect to get into the ultra high vacuum range just because of the fact that I have, um, you know, very uh, f uh, good amount of these ISO style flanges. If everything were con flat, then we could go much, much higher um, vacuum. And the next most common um, thing you'll see are quick flange, CF, um, or KF rather, CF is con flat. So these are KF, also known as uh, NW, I think, but there's a few names for them. So this is a KF40 right here. Um, there's a few common sizes you'll see are KF10, KF16, KF25, and KF40. So this uses uh, a clamp like this. This is a KF40 clamp, this is a KF16 clamp. And then the centering rings look like this. and uh, the clamp goes around the connector. This is a KF25 to KF40 conical adapter. Um, it's a KF40 O-ring. Um, so th these are pretty heavily used as well. Um, here, this is just, these are KF40 uh, valves. And uh, all these like stainless bellows hoses um, that you see, I have a bunch of them in my chamber here. These are all uh, KF20 in my case. Um, this is a KF40, KF40 valve, and then a KF40, KF25 conical adapter. And then everything after this is KF25 um, between all my pumps. This is actually a KF16, it tapers down to on the backing port of the turbo. And uh, I have an extra KF40, I have to block that off on here. This is a bit of an odd flange. Um, not going to take it apart, I have like a blank slug in there now, but it's a quick disconnect uh, compression fitting. So it's a bit odd, you don't see those too often. And of course you have things like uh, 90 degree elbows, this is a KF25, uh, it's aluminum, this one right here. These, uh, these valves are pretty expensive actually, these KF40 uh, valves. And you also have elbows for con flat, this is a 2 and 3 quarter inch uh, con flat elbow. Something else you'll probably run into are these awesome fittings. These are called VCR, and uh, looks like that. They have they're very similar to Conflat in that they have a knife edge sort of thing, and they use uh, gaskets. Um, here's one. This has a retaining clip on it, but it's a copper gasket, just like the Conflat. And these things make very very good seals. So these are VCR. These are mass flow controllers, and these allow me to create atmospheres inside of this chamber after I pump it down a very precise amounts of different gases. These are uh, normally closed pneumatic uh, valves and then it goes up to the chamber. Um, I have these and everything's you know, VCR after that. Let's talk about pumps real quick. Um, there's a couple, there's two big categories of pumps you'll need to get into very high vacuums. Uh, the main one is a mechanical pump. Down there is an Edwards number 12 uh, rotary vane mechanical pump. And that'll get me down to one time sent to the minus three tour. And then I have a turbo molecular pump, which is a high vacuum pump. And then once um, the chamber is roughed down to the one time sent to the minus three, this can get me to minus six to minus seven range. So, but this cannot pump down from atmosphere. So you need to use both of these um, together, a roughing and a finishing pump. There's also cryogenic pumps and diffusion pumps that will um, act as your finishing pumps as well. So I have this set up, um, oh, oh, by the way, um, these oil pumps can backstream oil into the chamber and they can spoil your vacuum. So it, it's good to have a trap. This is a four line trap and um, there's a heater, a uh, Watlow heater that goes in there and it's got like desiccant beads in it. And um, it, it slows things down a little bit when you're pumping, 
but it, it'll help the backstreaming of fluids into your chamber. So I have um, all the valves set up so that when I want to pump down the chamber initially, I close that valve and um, open that valve there so that I'm pumping down from the mechanical pump straight to the chamber. And I pump down the chamber, then I close that valve and open that one so I can turn on the turbo pump and then I can pull through the turbo pump. So when the turbo pump's working, you need what's called a backing pump. And the turbo pump basically compresses the air on the output to arrange that the mechanical pump can start drawing out. Because after a point, the air is so thin in the chamber where the mechanical pump is basically useless. So the turbo pump can help the mechanical pump be able to pull out the remaining air molecules. So for the turbo pump to work effectively, we have to have this backing assembly. So I have the KF25 hose through an elbow, and then this is just a uh, valve, isolation valve, and then this goes to the backing port of the turbo. So once the chamber is pumped down, I close that valve, open the backing line, and then I pull through the turbo and spin up the turbo, etc. And uh, when you're using a turbo, it's very, very important that you come back up to atmosphere very, very slowly. So you'll need something like uh, one of these. This is a vacuum vent valve and this will vent you up the atmosphere very slowly because the turbo pumps are are quite fragile if you want to get into this stuff for cheap um you can normally pick up diffusion pumps on ebay for a couple hundred a couple hundred dollars and um, you have to work out some kind of cooling for that this is a diagram that explains what i was talking about uh, with the pumps better there's a mechanical pump there's the chamber there's a turbo and then you'll need a couple of valves for your ideal setup this specific pump allows you to put a gas ballast through it um, that's selectable, so you can put like nitrogen through it. Um, and you can also select between a high throughput and a uh, high vacuum uh, mode with that selector. Um, it's got an exhaust port right here, uh, which I'm gonna run a hose out the window, or uh, out a door rather, just to get the, um, it's not completely necessary, but I just wanna get all of that uh, away from where I'm working. On the bottom of my chamber, I have these two um, quite massive copper feed throughs and this is how I get the high current in my chamber for thermal evaporation you can see them right there they're actually meant for RF I believe but they can handle the current uh, without a problem and then this big one gauge welding cable runs back to a rewound microwave oven transformer nothing really new there this turbo pump runs on uh, 220 volts AC uh, or rather the controller runs on 220, the pump runs on much less. So I have a step-up converter, 110 to 220. It's like a you know travel converter. And then down here is a uh, controller box um, that I'm making, and it's got a National Instruments DAC board that's going to read sensor data and um, pressures and all kinds of stuff and give me a nice readout on the computer. Um, it's got a motherboard in it, quad-core, 8 gigs of RAM. It's a bit overkill, and then some other electronics and stuff in there. I don't really show you the inside, so I'll show you that now. Um, there's not much in there right now. You can just see the uh, two big copper feed throughs coming through, and then that white thing right there um, is a thermocouple with insulators in the lead. That's the big right there. That's where the turbo pump's connected. So there's not a whole lot in there right now. Much like the vacuum pumps, it's important that you have multiple vacuum gauges as well. It's not as simple as you may think. So. Um, I have a, three vacuum gauges on this chamber here, and this they allow me to read anywhere from atmospheric, from well, just below atmospheric pressure when I first turn my pump on, um, all the way down to ultra high vacuum range. There are a ton of different types of gauges, and even some hybrid types. Um, there's cold cathode, hot cathode. Uh, tr um, this is a capacitive capacitance tr uh, transducer sensor. There's panning gauges. Um, inverted magnetron, thermocouple. If you look on Wikipedia, they give you a good overview of all of those. But in my case, um, I'm using this Baratron uh, pressure transducer here. This gets me down to 0 0.001 tor, roughly. It gives me an analog voltage out, and uh, that's pretty simple to use. And uh, this has basically got a diaphragm in the middle of it, and it's got a known vacuum on this side of it um, th th that's chemically gettered. And then it's got your vacuum chamber on this side, and then the disc will deform either way, and you can measure the capacitance change, and then therefore you can get your absolute pressure um, if you know the, the vacuum that's inside of this. So that's the first valve I use, um, first um, gauge I use. And then I have a thermocouple gauge. These are not very accurate. They're, they're pretty 
crew, they're, they're more commonly used for backing pressure, um, which I'm going to get another one for that. It's, it's not hooked up right now, but these, um, they're uh, pretty, easy to, pretty easy to use. I'm going to be using one of those to measure the backing pressure. Um, I might tack it onto this T here or something, and that will allow me to um, measure my low vacuum side um, independently from the high vacuum and just make sure that the mechanical pump is doing its job while we're backing the, uh, the, backing the turbo. And then my uh, high vacuum gauge on here is a hot cathode ionization gauge. It's got a yttria coated um, uridium filament right there. And uh, this is the big cable for the controller, which I'll show you in a second. The collectors up at the top here. These things are pretty neat. And uh, that blue cable runs all the way over here to the HP ionization gauge controller. And that's right here. I can't turn this on and on until basically when I, when I turn the turbo pump on, this can come on. Otherwise, the filament will burn out. And the other things I have here, um, this thing's just reading thermocouple temperatures as of now. Uh, this is letting me measure the current through that microwave oven transformer. And Variac for that as well. And this is a uh, quartz thickness monitor and deposition controller. It has an output to uh, you control a shutter as well. So you can enter like the desired uh, thicknesses and things, and this will allow you to monitor your rate and thickness of the film that you're growing, which is pretty neat. So uh, those are some of the things that I've learned in the past couple months while uh, getting into this vacuum stuff. Of course, there's always more to learn, um, but I thought I'd share that with you, and hopefully that'll get some people uh, started a little bit quicker than I did. So thanks for watching, and if you have any suggestions or ideas what I should do with all this vacuum stuff, um, please uh, leave me a comment. I really enjoy reading them. Thanks.